Hey everyone, so what we want to take uh, some time out to do today is uh, talk about our first week here off grid, um, talk about the learning curves that we've had. Um, for me it hasn't been all that much of a learning curve uh, being that I was raised uh, or kind of grew up on a farm, we always had wood burning st stoves, um, learning to cook different ways. Um, just working differently even in the city we had wood burning stoves um, being power conscious because we didn't have a lot of money things like that um, so uh, I think Kimberly had more of a learning curve this week being that she's never been outside of a city always uh, you know raised with the natural gas uh, we got electric stoves all that nice stuff hot water or hot water tank so you always had uh, water, a pressurized system, because here we're spring fed, so there was a couple things we had to learn with that. Um, so maybe she would like to uh, start off the video with what she's uh, learned this week, and uh, I'll kind of elaborate or kind of point out a couple things that I've also noticed that were different from when uh, I was on a farm. So Kimberly, if you'd like to uh, maybe start this off, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah, so, um... One of the biggest learning curves, I think, uh, for me, uh, the first and most immediately obvious one uh, was the gas stove. Um, and a gas stove is something that's run on propane rather than through an electric system um, like you have when you are in an on-grid home or somewhere in the city. Um, so with an off-grid home, yeah, we run our stove on propane. Um, we have a gas stove here. One thing that I really like about the gas stove is that it actually heats up, I find, a lot faster and it cools down a lot faster uh, than an electric stove would. Uh, I find that there's more control over the actual temperature because um, you can adjust it uh, inside as well as outside, which is the same as an electric stove, but it's uh, it, I find that the temperature allows for a little bit more control uh, over the stove itself. So that's a nice thing to, to have learned, um, and I guess it's a good thing because when you have a gas stove to cook on, you have to learn how to cook on a gas stove. Yeah, not to mention the workout you get with the cast iron cookware. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the cast iron cookware is something that, we, uh, that I have never even seen before other than in videos or, or whatever, uh, but there's something I've never handled before. Um, and for someone like myself with small wrists and hands, uh, it's been quite the, <laughs> quite the experience to lift that with one hand. And uh, I've, got, I've gotten used to it now, but it was definitely over the first, the, the first couple days was a little like, whoa, that's heavy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, for, for me, this uh, first week of the biggest one for me would be the, uh, the uh, spring or gravity fed water system that we have being fed by a natural spring. So the natural spring is up on a mountain and it's piped right in the house. Now the downside on that, it's, there's no um, pump or anything, there's just a natural pressure up from the mountain. So we don't have a full 50 PSI like you do in a house. And so we've noticed that um, our hot water on demand system doesn't kick in because it requires the 50 PSI uh, to heat up and we have about, I don't know, maybe 25, 30 PSI coming into the house just on its own. So we could add a booster pump. Uh, however, one of the tricks that the, the previous owners showed us when they came uh, to take us through the place was you just turn on the uh, faucet in the, wa in the, in the bathroom uh, as you're taking the shower just so you can have consistent hot water. Um, that was one of the biggest things I've learned this week. Um, I'm not sure what you've experienced with the uh, water system around here. Yeah, uh, elaborating on that, it definitely is a lot, um, I find a lot harder, especially with the sink, um, to control the temperature um, of the hot water or the consistency rather. Uh, we kind of have to turn the hot water on, let the pipes fill up with hot water, and then gradually adjust the temperature as it gets to be too hot to handle. Uh, but yeah, with the bathroom, um, yeah, turning the sink on and then turning the shower on to get the consistent stream of hot water. So hot showers are not a problem, uh, but it's definitely not the same water pressure uh, that you would find in the city where you have, you know, the really nice like massage jets or whatever. It's not like that. Uh, no, nowhere do we have a problem with the water pressure, but it's definitely not the same that we're, uh, that I was used to anyways in the, in the city. Yeah, well, yeah, we didn't realize about turning the, the, um, 
tap right away or we forgot about it. So the first day we're taking a shower or the first time I'm taking a shower, I turn the water on, letting let it heat up. And then I just shut everything off. And because it's too hot, now I'm trying to adjust it. Next thing you know, you're in ice cold water. But I don't mind the, uh, <laughs> the uh, cold showers in the morning because it kind of wakes you up. But uh, yeah, Kimberly, not for not, me not, though. Kimberly, uh, not, not for so me. Much. <laughs> um, also, um, now what else, what else would we like to talk about? Maybe the solar system or uh, yeah, anything else with the water system? I'm not no. sure. No. Yeah, I think the next one would be the water system was pretty easy to get used to. It's nice to drink water right out of a tap actually because it's uh, spring fed and it's actually nice and cold, so you don't even have to. Uh, put it in the fridge to uh cool, to cool down yeah, that's, yeah so that's really it nice tastes different too yeah well much cleaner um now the, ne the next one uh would be the solar system i would say yes um being a lot more power conscious and things of that nature um what have you noticed um so i mean i uh i have a a, f a couple family members who have have a a place that is off grid and so they have always uh, they've always run stuff off of a generator if they didn't have solar power uh, when we came here that was something similar as well um, where we have we have two generators here actually that the previous owners left for us um, and they were able to were able to use those if we don't have enough solar power uh, but keeping a constant charge on the solar panels or on our uh, on our system is really important because you can't let it drain all the way down to zero obviously uh, so the previous owners gave us a number. They said, don't drop it below this number. Make sure it stays above that at all times. Uh, so whether we're getting that energy from uh, the sun, from the sunlight, when the solar panels absorb that, or whether we're getting that energy from the generator running, which runs on gasoline or diesel, depending on which one we're running, um, and that will charge the batteries so that we can have power to the house. Um, so, so far we've made sure, you know, that we haven't dropped below that certain number, that we've remained well above that number, actually. Um, but in terms of just being more power conscious, yeah, it's not your typical house. Like, you know, you can't, it, we've discovered with, with bigger appliances, uh, we have to turn the generator on to have them run or we will short the system. Um, Andre knows a little bit more about that, being an electrician, but uh, one of the things that I've noticed, you can't run the blender without running the generator or you're going to uh, destroy the system. You'll, you'll override it. Yeah, so, so as Kimberly mentioned, I, I am an electrician by trade and I've installed solar systems before, but I've never actually managed one. So it was a little bit of a learning curve for myself. Um, so we have a system that uh, the solar panels generate 1800 watts coming in. Uh, however, our inverter only puts out 480. So we can run our standard, uh, you know, um, laptop, TV, um, the lights around the house, things of that nature, but say we wanted to turn on the microwave and the blender as uh, Kimberly was mentioning, and those things run probably about a thousand watts easy, and so the inverter does not, uh, is not capable of producing that thousand watts when it's only limited to 480. Uh, we could kind of get around that by increasing the um, solar system we have here to a bigger solar system uh, which requires more batteries it would be a 48 volt system as opposed to the 24 we have here and then that would give us the uh, uh, 2000 watts of uh, power that we could use on that inverter um, so yeah we've uh, the, another thing that I actually noticed with the uh, solar system is that it's um, uh, there's different stages of charging on the uh, batteries which uh, I didn't know so you have bulk charging and then uh, float charge and uh, things of that nature um, absorb charging too. and absorb charging too so I'll, I'll do another video on the whole solar system I'm not gonna get too in-depth on this um, so yeah we did notice on the cloudier days we're not really getting as much um, power from the solar panels that we want so on the cloudy days we're generating anywhere between i don't know 100 to 250 watts per hour um, and then on the sunny days um, like yesterday we were bringing in about uh, 12 to 1300 watts and so it really boosted the system um, however 
when I do want to make that uh, smoothie in the morning, uh, we got to fire up the generator, which is nice. So we have one uh, Kubota diesel generator that will send in directly 240 volts into the house if we need that extra power. Um, and then we also have a gasoline uh, gener Honda generator that'll, that'll just send you the standard 120. And uh, that's kind of what I'm using right now because we really don't need the power from the uh, diesel generator because in all honesty we don't really use that much um, power in the house everything is LED um, the most that is being used I believe right now is the refrigerator um, we have no issues with that we do have a deep freezer um, however we just put it outside now because it's minus 11 and it's pretty good yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why uh, yeah. waste it? Why waste the power yeah, when you exactly. don't need to? So. Um, and I think that's another thing that's really come home um, to me, especially. Um, I was always that kid, you know, like turning off all the lights when we weren't in rooms and make sure that you, you know, turn things off when they're not in use and unplug things when you're not using them, like simple things like the blender or the coffee maker or appliances that aren't necessarily used um, on a constant basis or a consistent basis. Um, I was always like that as a kid, but now being here in an off-grid home, uh, I'm definitely even more conscious of it than I used to be. Because um, my constant thought is, oh, how many watts are we using? How much power are we using? Um, or rather, how much power are we wasting that we don't need? Um, and I think that's a really good mentality for a lot of people to have, you know, regardless of whether you're in an off-grid home or an on-grid home. Um, be aware of the power you're using and make sure that you're taking care of the environment around you. Um, I think being in an off-grid home, it just kind of brings it more to your attention because you're you're gonna have to do something actually yourself if if nothing uh, if nothing works, <laughs> you gotta go turn the generator on or something, right. right? Whereas uh, in an on-grid home, you could you, you're aware of what you're using, but you're just you're gonna use it because you have it through the city. So just little learning curves of, of a difference. Um, we have all the same sort of amenities. It's, it's just done differently because we use the things that we have around us here in, in our environment. Mm. Yeah. Maybe you, you would like to touch on the uh, wood burning heat because... Uh, yes, that's another yeah. thing. Uh, wood burning heat. So uh, being a female, um, <laughs> I tend to get colder in the morning um, when I first wake up. Um, and so, you know, we usually, when we, when we uh, use the wood burning stove, which we use it on a consistent basis, on a daily basis, obviously many times a day uh, for heat. So we will start a fire in the morning, keep it going all day. Um, off and on, you know, like we'll feed it and then we'll choke it out so that it's not producing quite as much heat. Uh, right now it's about 22 degrees in here, mm -hmm. which is comfortable. Um, I'm sitting here in a tank, you know, and <laughs> it's, it's fine. Um, when we go to bed, usually we will stock the, the fire with wood um, and make sure that we have enough wood for it to burn slowly throughout the night uh, so that when we wake up, uh, whenever that may be, whether that's six hours later or seven hours or eight hours, we'll usually still have some coals that are left from the fire. Uh, so then we have to, one of the first things we'll do when we, when we wake up in the morning is build that fire up again because it's dropped overnight. It's sitting at 22 right now and it'll stay at 22 uh, as long as we keep that fire going. Um, but overnight, because we're not feeding it, there's a solid six to eight hours where you don't have wood going in. Um, and so it's usually about 18 degrees. We haven't dripped, dropped, dropped below that, I don't think. No. But it's usually about 18 degrees here in the morning. Um, perfect for which sleeping. Is, <laughs> which is, yeah, perfect for sleeping. Um, it's honestly not too bad. It is a little, a, a little chilly, uh, but it helps to wake me up in the morning. So I'm certainly not complaining. It's nice to wake up and have the refreshing... Like, oh, it's a little bit colder, like, you need to get up and get moving, and that's always one of our first chores, so when we yeah. have this place back to 22 in probably about an hour. Which is, is enjoyable, it? actually, yeah. because you get the smoke started in the house, and you give that nice little scent in the house. Yeah, wood-burning like, smell, wood-burning smell, yeah, I kind of miss that. Uh, yeah, that's uh, been something I had in my very first house that we did, is actually oil heat and wood-burning, and oil was... Expensive, yeah. Ex well, it's expensive, right? I had to pay. I think it was seven hundred dollars every two or three months just to just to heat up the place. So we just used wood because it was just uh, cheaper and cheaper and easier. And yeah, it's a little bit of work, but actually things dry out a lot quicker and it's a lot cheaper and keeps you fit. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Yeah. Other than <laughs> which, that, which being fit is always something you want. Out that's of right. Off -grid that's home. right. Actually, the appetite's yeah. been going up over here, working so much. <laughs> so it's good yeah. though. Um, 
yeah, I think that's I think it. that's about it for now. Yeah. Um, if there's anything that we you felt that we missed or that you would like us to elaborate on, uh, maybe leave a comment down in the se in the comment section. Hit that subscribe button, uh, ring the bell so you can get notifications. Um, we would like to uh, teach anyone or help anyone that's interest interested in this lifestyle. So. Uh, we will be doing uh, videos on the regular. She'll be Kimberly will be doing her little videos once in a while. I'll be doing my other videos also on the side, and we'll be doing them together as well. So uh, stay tuned. Um, any questions? Leave a comment. She'll probably answer the comments because uh, <laughs> she's one of those uh, computer I, people. I, I I am I and, like uh, to talk. Yes, that's right. So, anyways. <laughs> We'll uh, be back uh, on the next video and uh, stay tuned. So thanks for coming out.